Hi guys. I want to do a black and white line work today. Oh, look at that uh, piece of the corners missing, but you know, that's okay. We're not about perfection here. Not at all. Here's my reference photo. Here's the, uh, the stuff I'm going to use. My Pentel brush pen, maybe a Sharpie pen. <sighs> guys, try them. <laughs> I love these things. They're so much fun. <sighs> I just can't seem to go without. But, y'all ready? We're going to sketch some. I don't, I don't really use, I don't, I don't sketch stuff out with pencil. I just, I just go straight in with pen. It's just, it's, it's become my habit now. I, I don't really feel the need for drawing out a pencil with landscape stuff. And these, uh, these black and white line work drawings are very, uh, it's very indulgent. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I love doing them. They're not the most fun to watch. Well, maybe they are. I don't know. I, all kinds of people have all kinds of different preferences. But, well, for editing, Melissa, they're not the most fun to watch because, you know, it's all black and white. There's there's not a lot of color. <laughs> it's just black and white. <laughs> and sometimes they'll throw a watercolor on top of these, but not always. So the... Because I just, I love doing them. I, I love making them. But they're very self-indulgent in that way. That it's, it's not the best thing to, to film. But I want to do it anyway. I don't care. <laughs> so, it's just, y'all have to put up with my self-indulgence at this moment. And I know, I do a lot of woods things. But I like being in the woods. So I like drawing about the woods too. We're gonna sketch them, paint them, draw them. All the trees. Trees are my happy place. And these super indulgent line work drawings are my happy place too. It's like junk food for the soul. <laughs> wasn't there like, like, uh, wasn't there some sort of books about that in the 90s? Like Campbell's Soup for the Soul kind of books. I kind of faintly remember those. This is, this is the art version for me. Y'all want a little, to know a little more about my process and how I think about stuff when I'm doing this? I think that might be helpful. Let's do that today. Yeah, let's do that. When I start looking at a, like a reference photo like this, kind of you look at general shapes. So you see this kind of triangle shape right here? That's kind of the triangle shape right here. See this little kind of path area right there? That's this path area right there. The big old tree. It sticks out quite a bit right there. You have to put in the big, big shapes first. If you think about it, about like big shapes, everything else gets easier. It gets easier if you got everything where it needs to be. You can move around where you are interested. Like I, I have a hard time sticking to one spot. Like. I was doing quite a bit of detail here, but then I decided I'd go over here, you know, and I'd go over here and here and here and I just kind of move around all the shapes once I've figured out where the shapes are and kind of put the, the big ones there. You see this beautiful diagonal in this picture? How it's, it's going to be mirrored right here? Okay, the main focal point. And there's a nice bright spot that's going to hit this tree in this part of the path. That's, that's, the, that's the big part of this layout. So that, that's how I'm able to do these line work drawings without doing any sort of like penciling in sketches and stuff because well, I guess I do the I do the sketches in my head and it's kind of hard to explain. I guess I've done it so long it's I've never really taken the time to try to explain it to anybody. And you know, if anybody wants to try it, y'all can do it, I promise. It just takes, takes time, it takes practice, it takes effort, but all things do. I highly suggest this pen, please, 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 go out and buy this pen because it will change your art. I love this thing. I have so many, like, refills of this. Pentel brush pen, mm, didn't get better than this. It's just one 
happens to be fabulous. Now, if I could find an eyeliner brush that's also like this, I'd be a very, very happy girl. So, uh, Pantel, if you'd like to get into makeup, um, can I have this in like uh, an eyeliner too, please? Thank you very much. Does that make sense, y'all? I don't know. It's just, it's what I do. It's how I sketch. It's how I think about things when I'm, when I'm painting and drawing and things. About those big shapes first, and then you get to put in the fun details afterwards. As long as you get the shapes down, and you, you gotta have a good structure, a good structure to your paintings. And that's especially, especially important to things like uh, portraits too. Like you're not gonna have very good time if you don't lay out the structure of the face. Same thing for landscapes. Landscapes are, you know, they're kind of their their own portraits of nature. I kind of like that. But much more interesting than people. I would much rather draw trees than people. Let's be serious. <laughs> I can't seem to help it. Portraits are fun too, though. It's a portraits are hard. <laughs> Hard because uh, trying to capture an essence of a person is just, it's very difficult. Um, because you're trying to capture a personality and not just their likeness. That That's, if you just want a likeness, all you do is, you know, you take a picture. And then that's not really, it's not very interesting for portraiture. Wait a minute. Why am I talking about portraits? on a video of a woods painting, huh? What what am I doing? Getting off topic. I really do feel like these uh, voiceovers that I do uh, they give a, a pretty a pretty good uh, a pretty good example of how my brain actually works. I just move around to different places and my voice can't keep up with where my brain is going. It's just it it is my reality. Um, I'm normally a pretty slow speaker. But my brain goes a lot faster, so sometimes my my speech jumps. It is it is what it is. <laughs> um, I have to slow down sometimes, slower than I already do talk, to try to backtrack and get get back to where I was trying to go. <laughs> it's kind of hard. I, mm, <laughs> talking is very difficult for me. <laughs> It's not something I excel in. It's something that I am constantly working on. <laughs> it's just one of those skills that has never really come easy to, for me to begin with. But, you know, it's just, I'm working on it. Just like I'm working on art stuff too. We all got things we gotta work on. Talking is one of the things I gotta work on. I know my extroverts out there are like, how could talking be hard? It doesn't make any sense. Talking's easy. Don't you want to talk to people all the time? No. <laughs> no, don't. I'm an introvert. I like being by myself. I am my own best company. Me and paints and this Pentel brush pen. We have a good time, okay? But, I mean, if you think about it, even these videos, I, I love talking through these videos. It's so much fun. And I, I really do, um, when I'm talking, I imagine I'm talking to a really close friend. You know, somebody that I've known for years and we're just having a conversation. Or I'm trying to try to teach really close friends something about art. Or, you know, just, just casual talking. And it's a lot of fun for me. But, you know, in reality, it's just me sitting at my computer talking into a microphone by myself. Well, I mean, my dog is, he's down here, but the dog don't count. He's always here. For an introvert to move through the world, we have to adapt to the world of the extroverts. It's, uh, I'll be honest, 2020 was the first time in my life I had ever seen anybody give tips on how to be an introvert and spend time by yourself. It's so funny because previously all I'd ever seen was tips on how to be more extroverted. It's so interesting how things can be different in different circumstances. It's just, it's just so interesting to me. I, I find people very interesting 
because there's just the differences are fascinating. Hence the reason why I've done a lot of portraiture. I find people fascinating and I want to be able to capture who they are on this 2D piece of paper or a canvas or I haven't really done too much digital portraiture. That's not it's not my thing yet. You know, maybe maybe, maybe we'll get there in actual physical mediums. I I I've, I've done quite a bit. A lot of these videos are actually filmed over multiple sessions, sometimes multiple days. Uh, this, this, some of them just take a long time to do, and uh, this isn't this isn't my full-time job. I, I do this as a hobby, so I have to do this in my free time. So sometimes you'll see continuity uh, errors. <laughs> you know, nails change, the clothing changes. Sometimes my hands are a little more eczema e. Is that a word? Eczema e. I'm gonna make it a word. <laughs> you know, I'm um, scaly and patchy and like that's what happens sometimes for people who have skin issues. Well, you know, stuff stuff changes because I do this over multiple days. Sometimes with the the watercolor ones, um, they'll even be over multiple weeks just because of uh, issues with uh, maybe I need to press the watercolor paper because it uh, kind of have little warbles in it or something. You know, it, 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 you never know. Or the way my brain works, maybe I'm working on three dozen different paintings at the same time, you know? <laughs> and I just cycle through whatever ones I'm interested in until I, I find the one that uh, <laughs> fits the mood for the day. <laughs> By this point, we're getting pretty deep into the painting and you should be able to see where the landscape is going. You can see most of the shadow areas of the hill. Pathway isn't perfectly defined yet, but we'll get to it. There's still a lot of work left for the the, the fo fo foliage, fo foliage, the leafy things, okay. Remember me saying how speaking is not my best treat? <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a thing. <laughs> we're gonna work through this though. Just like we're going through all these itty bitty little nonsense details that I've added to this painting already. <sighs> you know, I use those very small Instax instant films to, uh, <laughs> to help me not focus on all of the details, but clearly, it don't work like that for me. <laughs> I end up putting all of the details in there anyway. I think the difference is though that I get to kind of make up the details and fudge it around a little bit instead of actually trying to copy the image, which is an upgrade, at least for, for the doing part of it. I don't know if it's an actual upgrade to the art itself, but it, it's an upgrade for the making. <laughs> the making is much more fun when I get to uh, use a little more imagination. And since these line work drawings are the most indulgent ones for me to do for myself anyway, I might as well have a good time just adding what I want to. I like the creativity part of, of art. You know, I'm not that interested in completely replicating real life. Like, I'm not going to replicate an image. I don't like hyper realism. I just don't. It doesn't... It doesn't... It doesn't drive with me very well because... You use a lot of skill to do the hyperrealism, but that's all. There, there's no creativity, there's not really much thinking in it. It's just a reproduction, 100% skill. And it just, it never gets my brain working. I've never felt connected to one of those pieces of, my, of mine or of anyone else's. It's always felt like those are missing something to me. It just, it doesn't strike my fancy. And that's okay if you like them. That's cool, you know? You, it's, it's okay to like something without knowing why. But I, in particular, know why I don't like them. And I, I think I've pretty clearly explained. I, I like things that are in between reality and imagination. The things that bridge that gap right in between, that are kind of real, but not. That's where I like to be. That's right 
where I want to exist, that, that very, very small in-between question place. And that's where I like a lot of my art to go. Sometimes these line works become almost comic book-like. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, as an adult, I'm not too surprised about that because I've kind of always loved comic books. I love a lot of the graphicness of that, that type of art. It, it does appeal to me quite a bit, and the storytelling often appeals to me. That's because that, that's what art is. It's storytelling. It's a visual way to communicate. And you know, as somebody who doesn't really speak that well, this is, I've kind of always reached for art as an, an in-between, a way to, to talk to people by just visual means. It's very important to me for that reason. It is. Can I convey to you what this summer afternoon was like in the woods by myself, just walking through this, walking this trail with the wind blowing softly and the, the leaves rustling and all the birds chirping? Do you feel it? Do you see where I'm going? Are you there too? Thank you for hanging out today. Keep your cup full and go make some cool stuff.